when you're out of knives, refill your stock by returning to Messiah or by pickpocketing thugs. Altair, my friend. Welcome, welcome. Whose life do you come to collect today? His name is Abu Nakud. What can you tell me about him? Oh, the merchant king of Damas. Richest man in the city. Quite exciting, quite dangerous. I envy you, Altair. Well, not the bit where you were beaten and stripped of your rank, but I envy everything else. Oh, except for the terrible things the other assassins say about you. But yes, aside from the failure and the hatred, yes, aside from those things, I envy you very much. I do not care what the other stinkers say. I'm here to do a job. So I ask again, what can you tell me about the Merchant King? Only that he must be a very bad man if Al Mualim has sent you to see him. He keeps to his own kind, wrapped in the finery of this city's noble district. A busy man, always up to something. I'm sure if you spend some time amongst his type, you'll learn all you need to know about him. And where would you have me begin my search? If I were you, I'd start with the Omayyad Mosque and Souk Saruja, both of which are west of here. Further to the northwest is Salahadin Citadel. It's a popular meeting spot and has proved a reliable source of loose tongues in the past. Yes, these three places should serve your needs. My thanks for your guidance, Rafiq. I'll return when I've gathered the necessary information. Sure, he also knows it wasn't easy arranging a shipment like this. It's only wine. Some can be fickle in their faith. Your holy book says something on the subject, I believe. Leave them that they may eat and enjoy themselves, and that hope may beguile them, for they will soon know. And never did we destroy a town that had a term made known. What's that supposed to mean? Never mind it. Be about your business. As you wish. Hold a moment, Altair. I have a strange request, but perhaps you'll see fit to assist me. I know you seek the Merchant King's life, but there are others in this city just as cruel. Several shopkeepers in this district have taken to selling rotten meat. It's cheap for them to acquire, and they care little for the illness that it causes. Several children have already died as a result. We should not allow this injustice to continue. Would you be willing to put a stop to this? <laughs> Your life is not <laughs> Oh, my God. 
have saved untold lives. In return for your kindness, I'll give you a bit of information you might find useful. I overheard two of the Merchant King's servants this morning. It seems they've left some scaffolding just outside his personal quarters. You could use it to reach him that much quicker. Safety and peace. You want information about the city, I suppose? Right now, I don't have time. I must find some flags which have been stolen from our cache in the rich district of Damascus. But with this heat, my legs cannot carry me anymore. Would you be kind enough to help me? Return with the flags and I'll help you as best I can. God save him! He's gone mad. Gone mad. He better not cause any trouble. the fountain in the middle of the Merchant King's palace could be easily climbed. Use this information wisely. Now, if you'd excuse me, I must go. ...that they may lay down their burdens and no joy. Our days may be dark, but thanks to him, our evenings are now filled with light. The Merchant King provides for one and all he asks for nothing in return. Let his generosity serve as an example to us all. Everyone should strive to be as he. You want something? You something to say? Away with you. dying for him. His coin's not worth my life. A wise decision. What is it you want? I have business with the Merchant King. Huh? Good luck with that. He rarely leaves his chambers. Why? Is he afraid? Not fear. Hate. He hates himself as much as he hates the people he pretends to serve. Locks himself away in his personal quarters out of shame. He can't stay hidden forever. No. No celebrations of his. He comes out to speak, to look down upon the people. A sense of belonging, I suppose, however brief. What's wrong with him that he would hide like this? <laughs> You'll see. 
Now let me go. Let you go? So you can tell him of my plan? I won't say a thing. No, you won't. of you to come. It is an honor to serve. What do you require? The letter I've given you must be brought to Salah Hattin's camp. Seek out the one they call Hisham. He will be able to help. Tell no one else of this. None will know my mission. Then our business is concluded. Take yourself from my sight. Time soon, neither. You've done me a kindness, young man. Be assured, I won't forget it. This is an ill tragedy. But I say, this is an honor to die in service to God, fighting for what we believe in. Please, sir, have any money. My family is upon dying. Just spare a few coins. Altair, my friend, my brother. It's been such a long time. Any news of Ada since she left? No. How sad. I'm sure you'll find her someday. I have heard a feather is lying on top of Abul Nukud's head. Maybe I could help you. But I have a mission myself. I have four targets I must eliminate before noon. Let's cooperate, just like old times. Two for you, two for me. They are Abul Nukud's personal guards. You will spot them in minutes. Wasn't that great? Just like in Alep, you remember? Here's something I found on one of the Merchant King's men. I think it's a map of where he has stationed his guards. I'm sure it will come in handy in your mission. Anytime you're in Damascus, come see me. You know my door is always open to you. Safety and peace, my friend. Just a few coins, please. 
My family is sick and dying. Could you spare a few coins? Come, people. Peace be upon you, Altair. How may I serve you? I've done as asked and learned all I need to know about my prey. Then you must share your knowledge with me. Abu Naqud is corrupt to the core and despised by his own citizens as a result. It appears he's been stealing money meant for the people of Damas and spending it on himself. Even as we speak, he flaunts his greed, preparing for a lavish party. His guards and servants should have their hands full dealing with the guests. They won't even know I'm there. Most impressive, my friend. The others said you'd make a mess of things, but not I. No, I was sure you'd come through, and come through you have. The Bureau is yours to do with as you please until you're ready to begin. Fast forwarding memory to a more recent one. your time, I will wait. I trust everything is to your satisfaction. Most excellent, most excellent. Good, good. It pleases me to see you all so happy. For these are dark days, my friends, and we must enjoy this bounty while we still can. War threatens to consume us all. Salah Adin bravely fights for what he believes in, and you are always there to support him without question. It is your generosity that allows his campaign to continue. So, I propose a toast then, to you, my dear friends, who have brought us to where we are today. May you be given everything you deserve for it. Such kindness! I didn't think it in you! You, who have been so quick to judge me, and so cruel! Oh, do not feign ignorance! You take me for a fool! But I have not heard the words you whispered behind my back. Well, I have, and I fear I can never forget. But this is not why I called you here tonight, no. I wish to speak more of this war, and your part in it. You give up your coin quick as can be, knowing all too well it buys the deaths of thousands. You don't even know why we fight. The sanctity of the Holy Land, you'll say, or the evil inclination of our enemies. But these are lies you tell yourselves. <laughs> no, all this suffering is born of fear and hate. It bothers you that they are different. Just as it bothers you, that I am different. <sighs> Compassion, mercy, tolerance. These words mean nothing to any of you. Mean nothing to those infidel invaders who ravage our land in search of gold and glory. And so I say, enough! I've pledged myself to another cause. 
One that will bring about a new world in which all people might live side by side in peace. A pity none of you will live to see. <coughs> now. Their words can no longer do harm. Why have you done this? You stole money from those you claim to lead. Sent it away for some unknown purpose. I want to know where it's gone and why. Look at me. My very nature is an affront to the people I ruled. And these noble robes did little more than to muffle their shouts of hate. So this is about vengeance then? No, not vengeance, but my conscience. How could I finance a war in service to the same god that calls me an abomination? If you do not serve Salah ad-Din's cause, then whose? In time, you'll come to know them. I think perhaps you already do. Then why hide? And why these dark deeds? Is it so different from your own work? You take the lives of men and women, strong in the conviction that their deaths will improve the lots of those left behind. A minor evil for a greater good? We are the same. No, we are nothing alike. Ah, but I see it in your eyes. You doubt. You cannot stop us. We will have our new world. Word has reached me of your success, Altair. Abu Nakud's reign of terror is at an end. I'm glad to hear it. He killed them. The men and women at his party. It was poison. A coward's tool. Blamed them for the war. Said he wished to end it. Strange. But then again, the merchant king was known to be a bit... different. Perhaps this was simply a symptom of his madness. Perhaps. You sound unconvinced. Speak with Al then. He may offer a better explanation. Yes, we'll see what he has to say. Fast forwarding memory to a more recent one. Should you enter a fist fight, guards will not interfere, but drawing your weapon will turn them hostile. Come, Altair. Speak with me a moment. As you wish. Word has reached me of your success. You have my gratitude and that of the realm. Freeing these cities from their corrupt leaders will no doubt promote the cause of peace. Can you really be so sure? The means by which men rule are reflected in their people. As you cleanse the cities of corruption, you heal the hearts and minds of those who live within. Our enemies would disagree. What do you mean? Each man I've slain has confessed strange words to me. They are without regret. Even in death they seem confident of their success. Though they do not admit it directly, there is a tie that binds them. I'm sure of it. 
There is a difference, Altair, between what we are told to be true and what we see to be true. Most men do not bother to make the distinction. It is simpler that way. But as an assassin, it is your nature to notice, to question. Then what is it that connects these men? Ah, but as an assassin, it is also your duty to still these thoughts and trust in your master. For there can be no true peace without order, and order requires authority. You speak in circles, master. You commend me for being aware, then ask me not to be. Which is it? The question will be answered when you no longer need to ask it. I assume you called me here for more than just a lecture. <laughs> Very well. A rank and weapon are again restored to you. Two more leaders remain. Go and see to it that their rule is ended.